Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profotech Sessions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning REST API development in PHP. This is our part 3. Inside this video session guys, firstly we will create our database table as well as we will make some connectivity with the file called database.php. Let's say that we are going to develop our REST API in student section. It means we have a student table. Inside that student table, we have some data. And on the behalf of those data, actually, we are going to perform our CRUD operation. It means create, read, update, and delete operation. So firstly, we will actually need a table for that. So if I back to our PHP my admin, now this is if I click on go button. Now firstly we have to create our database. So if I click on databases, now let's say that we are going to create called REST underscore let's say PHP underscore API. If I press enter, now database created successfully. So right now inside this database we have no tables. So firstly we will actually create a table. So that table is something called TBL underscore let's say a student's table and uh, it will contain let's say about six columns press go button and inside this table now we are ready to define our schema for this table so firstly it will contain about the auto increment id it means that this is our primary key if i make some zoom so this is id and the next column we want something called the student name a student email, a student mobile number. If I scroll down, let's say that this should be let's say status means the student is active or inactive. And finally, at what time basically we have created that record. Now let's choose about the data type. So this created ad should be timestamp, and the default value actually we want to insert something current underscore timestamp. It means this column, if we are going to insert no data inside this column, then this column automatically picks the data about current timestamp of the MySQL server. And a status should be int, and the default value of a status, let's say that it is something one value and one represents active here. Now the column something mobile and the mobile let's say var car and it should be let's say 15 characters in length and the default value that it will contain the null value. Again for the email address it also should be var car let's say 50 characters in length and the default value should be null and name is var car and it also let's say 80 characters in length and it should be also null value if I scroll here now go at the top so the first column that is ID we have made we want to make it as a auto increment it means that it should be a primary key so press go button so successfully we have assigned each and every column with their respective data types so finally, if we press about the go button, so let's say save. Now if we back to our database dot means rest PHP API our database. Now inside this database, this is the first table we have created. If I click on this table, this is my MySQL server error, so don't worry at all. Now this table has no data. If you go to structure, now this is the structure what we have created so far. Why we have created this table? Because on the behalf of our APIs for the create means create.php, we are going to insert some data inside this table. From read.php file, we are going to read all the data from this file. And from the update, we are going to update any information inside this table with the help of this primary key. And for the delete, we will delete some data by the help of this primary key. So all the operations of our REST API should be dependent on this tb underscore students table. So that's why we have created that. Now let's get started about the some codings. So if I back to Atom Editor, now this is our database.php file. Now inside this file, we are going to connect our database connectivity code. And remember that all the codes actually what we are going to do inside this REST API development, we will follow up to object oriented. 
What does it mean? It means that we will make some class of database, some class of our file called student.php and we will make object of each class inside this v1 files and we will access on APIs. So that's why this is object oriented. We will follow each and every step that how can we create a class and how can we make a instance of that class. So firstly, let's get started about database.php file. So define our PHP tag and inside this PHP tag, I am to define a class and let's say database. Inside this database, now we have created that class. Now we have to define some variables. So let's say private and this should be host name, private, let's say it should be DV name private it should be username why we are defining so let's say private and it should be let's say password by the help of these credentials means host name database name username and the password we will make the object of our mysql i and finally one more variable which contains about connection details so this should be something called con here now successfully we have defined our private variables inside this class. Now next we are going to define a method inside this. So let's say public function and this should be connect method. Now inside this connect actually we are going to make the initialization of these variables and also we will use about mysqli function to connect with our database. So here if I make some comments so this is all about variable and this should be something declaration now inside this class we are going to let's say variable initialization and inside this if we want to access any of the variable from the top so we have to make it as this this refers to the current class and let's say host name so this host name refers to this variable and the host name it means that our server is localhost because what we have opened mysql i server at the localhost this is our host name so localhost next we have called this db name and the database we have created if we back to browser so this is our database something rest php api so copy that and pasting it here now the next we have called this username and username we have called root and finally we have password let's say this password and this should be actually I think that MySQL I server in my case root is the password in your case it should be different. Now finally after slicing each of the variables let's connect our database so this connection variable equal to new let's say mysql i this is mysql i function basically it's a class and now by the help of this construct function of this class now we are going to make our connectivity so the first variable we have to pass call this host name so pasting it here now the second variable we have to pass call our database name no it's a username so copy that pasting it here now the next we have called our password so this password and finally we have this as a DB name so successfully we have actually given all the required parameters or the needed parameters inside this mysql i and it will return about about the boolean status of our mysql i database connectivity if MySQL is successfully connected with our database with all these details then it will return about the connection details else it will return some error. So let's say that firstly we need to check that either we have some error or successful connection object variables. So let's say if this connection let's say error it should be error no means to check the status 
actually this is not only error no it should be connect underscore error no it means we have some error in our connection then it will return the status means either true or false it contains means the return value of this property is our boolean value so in case of false value it means we have some error so we need to print that so print r let's say this connection means con variable here is the connection variable and let's say connect underscore error now it will give our connection error and finally we need to exit from this class as well as from this method now else it means we have successful connection so return this connection so finally guys we have made our database class inside this database class we have now private variables and inside these private variables we have assigned some values means our database connection details and we have used mysqli class in that construct function basically we have passed all the parameters and try to make connection with our database if all these details if it true then it returns about the boolean value as true value otherwise it will contain about the false value so after getting false value means after getting true value it means we have some error after getting error now this is all about printing error message so here if I write flag so let's say true it means that it have some error otherwise if it contains false value it means that no error in connection details so this is the file basically we are going to use with our means all these v1 files so for the time being how can we check that this file is working or not so obviously if i copy this class name go at the footer and let's say that db equal to new and the database.php means this is the class we have successfully created an object and by the help of object actually we are going to use or check that this file is working or not if i copy this object and let's call the method actually what we have made as let's say connect and this is the method actually we had defined right here inside this class and we are going to call this method for the help of this object so for now actually we don't want to return this connection variable now this time I am to use print r to check via our browser now if I save all these changes back to browser open a new tab and let's localhost after that we have to specify our project variable name so if I copy the project name that is REST API PHP go to the browser and pressing it here now inside this right now we have three folders what we have created called classes config and v1 now inside this config folder we have called database.php so if I click on this file now as we can see that our connect means back to our editor but now means it has executed also for confirmation if I write some message that is something let's say hyphen hyphen something successful let's say connection so save all these changes back to browser reload this page now as we can see that here is the prefix what we have added called successful connection now let's say that if we have some error in the username something root 5 and as we know that this is wrong username so if we save all these changes back to browser now access denied it means we have some error again if I make our database name wrong go to the browser reload this page now unknown database it means this file is now working so making a successful connection with our database each of the credentials and the code of this file called database.php should be in correct way so if I comment all these things what we have means written to check our file working because this file should be accessed by our API's files and finally 
we have to make uncomment of that again back to browser reload this page now nothing appears because we have not created uh, also we have made comment of the created object so successfully guys by the help of this database.php file we have created this class and completed all the functionality what basically this file will perform now in the next video we will do some coding standards for our student.php now student.php basically inherits this file or let's say extend this class to actually make our database connectivity to perform all the CRUD operation now inside this video session guys, if you have any doubt then please drop your comment, I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.